Welcome to Hacker Heap. In this tutorial, we will look into what is a circuit breaker and what are the uses of circuit breaker. It is very common for a software system to call a remote software system and the remote calls might fail. It is more common in the microservice architecture when a client calls your service, your service might be calling 100 different services behind the scenes in the microservice architecture. When one of the services is not responding, what happens is the client calls goes on and the resources will get used. To avoid this, it is a best practice to implement circuit breaker pattern. We will look into how to implement that using resiliency force. Let's say you have two services, service one and service two. When a client calls service one, service one internally calls service two. Let's say if service two is not responding and if it continues to not respond, over time, when there are so many requests from different clients, uh, it continues to use up the resources uh, and eventually everything will be fall down. So when you have a circuit breaker in place, we will set up a threshold for failures in the circuit breaker configuration. We will say, let it wait for 10 failures and then we will set up a threshold for failures. Once the threshold for failure crosses, the circuit breaker goes into open state and it will wait for some time and it goes to half open state. While it was on open state, no calls will be going to service two. The response will be going from service one itself. When it goes to half open state, uh, service one will pass on 50% of the traffic and see if there are failures or successes. Depending on the success ratio, it will go to closed state at which point at that point all the traffic will go to service 2 from service 1 if the failure rate is more it goes back to open state okay i'm here on my spring tool suit i have the rest service open here and uh, you can see the rest controller here and i had a get endpoint uh, slash get sleuth test which i used in my previous video and here if you see it is calling another service named service one which i won't be starting now i will be only starting this service so that we can test the circuit breaker capabilities so i'll go ahead and start the service so i have the service up and start running at 80 82 let me open my postman i have my postman open so let me go ahead and uh, hit it uh, the get endpoint at a uh, localhost 8082 slash get sleuth test so obviously you will be getting a 500 error because it says the get request for 8081 service one connection refused because i haven't started the service yet there so let me hit couple of times uh, so i'm hitting it again and again it is trying it, it is still trying to hit the service 8081 if you see the logs here uh, so you can see the connection refused error this error while calling uh, 8081 service one which is not up so once we implemented the circuit breaker what happens is after a couple of failures uh, which we will define in a threshold limit it will stop calling service one all the time so let's go ahead and uh, implement uh, the circuit breaker pattern which we discussed uh, earlier using resiliency 4j and resiliency 4j is an open source uh, library they also provide a dependency for spring boot so let me go ahead and get those uh, dependencies i will go ahead and uh, look for resiliency circuit breaker spring boot to maven repository and i'm here there so it gives me that resiliency 4j spring boot uh, which is of version uh, 0.13 so it shows a 0 0.13, but I don't think it's the right version. It's the current version. So it shows a 0 0.13, but here it shows a 1.3.1 .1 is the latest version. I will go ahead and pick up this dependency and add it to the palm.xml here. Along with that, I'll go ahead and add a couple more resiliency 4J dependencies. The reason I'm adding here is because I'm already using Spring Cloud in the palm.xml. 
So Spring Cloud dependencies all already has the internal dependencies of uh, Resiliency 4J Circuit Breaker, but it has the older version and I don't want to use the older version. So I want to use the newer version 1.3.1. So I will go ahead and add Circuit Breaker as well as uh, Resiliency 4J all dependencies. So I have added Spring Boot to Resiliency 4J, Resiliency 4J Circuit Breaker, Resiliency 4J Time Limiter and Resiliency 4J Micrometer and Resiliency 4J All. Generally, you don't have to add all these dependencies because you will get all those dependencies with that. The reason I added it is because I already have Spring Cloud dependencies along with this. Uh, so Spring Cloud has the old version of Resiliency 4J, which is creating the conflicts. Uh, so I don't want to have any conflicts. So I added a 1.3.1 version. So let me go ahead and import that. So as I was saying, if you hover over here, it says uh, overriding managed version 1.1.0 for Resiliency 4J circuit breaker because Spring Cloud as that 1.1.0 uh, version. So I want to override it with 1.3.1 so that uh, I'm using the latest dependencies. So now let's go ahead and make changes to our properties files. So if you go to the properties files, I will create an application YAML file instead of a properties file. So to make it faster, I have already copied uh, the resiliency 4J properties. Uh, so these are the basic properties. What I'm saying here is Resiliency 4J. So when Resiliency 4J is trying to implement the circuit breaker pattern, it will look for this configuration. So this is the main indicator. The thing we said is a, here is a sliding window size. We give the 10, which means it will wait for 10 calls, you can say, or the minimum number of calls as five. And this is calculated using either time-based or call-based. It will wait for minimum of five failures uh, before it goes to open state after that uh, see permitted number of calls in half open state is three like when it goes to half open state after a couple of seconds uh, uh, five seconds that's what we mentioned here wait duration in open state uh, it will go to half open state uh, and again it will test for three calls if three consecutive calls are successful it will go to closed state or else it will go back to open state so that's all the configuration here. And if you see the record exceptions, uh, right now I'm recording HTTP server ex exception, timeout exception, IO exception, or connection exception. Right now we are getting this uh, connection exception because uh, we haven't started the service yet. And this means, uh, so you can configure, so you can have multiple configurations. This is the default configuration I can have or type one, type two, and type three, and you can set uh, the configuration to the services accordingly when you give the name. So once we have this configuration ready, what we need to do is in the main controller, we need to apply circuit breaker for this particular method. So let's see how to do that. We need to define the service name that we have provided in the YAML file that is main service. So I will define a variable to have that name here main underscore service which is main service i hope that's the name i gave yeah so the next thing we need to do here is uh, we need to come here and add the circuit breaker annotation let me go here and add circuit breaker annotation providing the name main service so this main service refers to this and this main service refers to the one in the application YAML file where we had given all the configuration details. In fact, that's all you need to do here. And if you start running and hit it, so it will wait for 10 calls and uh, it, it will stop calling the service uh, or once uh, the circuit breaker is turned open. So let's see how that works. So I'm here back uh, on my postman and let me try to hit it a couple of times uh, and see what's going on there. So yeah, I have hit it a couple of times and it had all these logs uh, and you see these errors. Let me go to the top of it. Oh, yeah, so if you see here, it prints the log uh, that we had it here, the logger info, I am here in service one calling, service calling service one. For the next calls, if you observe, we don't see that logger anymore because it throws the error by itself and it didn't actually went into inside this function. It throwed the error even before going to that function, particular function. And again, it went to 
a half open state and it printed uh, the logger info and again since it's not successful it went to the open state and uh, it threw the error to see it clearly what we will do is we will add a failback method which is used when an exception occurs so all you need to do is uh, the fallback method we'll go ahead and add the fallback method naming test fallback so we didn't have the fallback method yet so let's go ahead and create that fallback method string the method we will use is this which actually catches the exception e what we will do is we will return a response entity object here new response entity let's fallback method and throw the exception so what we did here is we had written a fallback method my bad it should be in the circuit breaker right over here what we did here is we have written a fallback method and we have provided that in the circuit breaker fallback once the exception occurs it comes here and it will send this message instead of calling the service one eventually so let's go ahead and test it out so i put my postman here if i call here oh, i haven't started yet so i'm here on my postman if i call here see it already threw in fallback method so if you see here immediately when the exception occurred it went here and threw the fallback method instead of actually calling the rest template get for object so whenever what happens is whenever there is an exception it fallbacks to this method this is generally used when there is a response delay or when you're doing an asynchronous process you just want to client to know that uh, your request has been captured you will just send this fallback method send a custom response so to recap we have looked into what is a circuit breaker and how it is useful in the microservice architecture how it helps uh, in saving the resources not being consumed when there is an service down in one of the microservices and we have looked into how to implement a simple circuit breaker using resiliency 4j and how to implement the fallback method hope this helps thank you